is listed in this particular chapter. So you are going to understand those things. So that is the chapter number three. So this chapter is also known as Krishna is the source of all incarnations. So let us start. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Narayanam Namaskritya
the heart of the Purusha lies down within the water of the universe. From the level, lake of his body sprouts a lotus stem. From the lotus flower atop this stem, Brahma, the master of all engineers in the universe, becomes manifest. So, the first creator the Lord has created is Brahma. So, Brahma is manifested. So, how did the Brahma take birth? Directly from the Lord. Lord is hence is called independent. Sara. To give birth to Brahma, he did not require the help of Lakshmi Devi. He can create just by his wish. He is, Lord is not bound by any laws. Because he is the lawmaker. He creates the laws. He makes the laws. None of his laws and rules, regulations bind the Supreme Law. So Lord created Brahma. So then it has manifested. Then. Yasya, Yasya Vayanava, Samstha, Samstha Nai, Yasya Vayanava, Yasya Vayanava, Samstha Nai, Kalpi Toloka Vistara, Tathvai Bhagavato Rupam, Vishuddham Sattvam Yajitam, It is believed that all the universal planetary systems are situated on the extensive body of the Purusha, but he has nothing to do with the created material ingredients. His body is eternally in spiritual existence par excellence. So even though he created, he is not part of it, he is not, he is nothing to do with it. What is Somebody asked a question. Lord is uh, you know, supremely powerful. Lord is called omnipotent. So we say three things for Lord: omnipotent, omniscient, and what is that? Omnipresence. Omnipresence. He is present everywhere. He is all knowledgeable, omniscient. Omnipotent is all powerful. What is the meaning of all powerful? Nothing that Lord can do. Now, Lord's wish only is sufficient to create the entire universe and maintain the universe and everything to go on. His energies are doing everything. <coughs> then what is God doing? Then what is the activity of God? Then what is, what is the God's activity? What he should be doing? Either he should be busy in creating, maintaining, you know, destroying, and you know, and you say he is all potent, he is fully wish is sufficient. Then what is he doing? Vedam kamanta maravindam nalayataksham marhavatam samasitam dasundarangam He is simply enjoying. Lord has no other work than enjoying. That is God. If somebody is busy in doing something, then he is not God. The God is Satchit Ananda Vikraha. He is playing fruit and enjoying with everything. He is only enjoying. He's, because his form is Ananda, happiness. Work is done by his energy. He is free. Once Srila Prabhupada said, one man from the western, a westerner, had come to Kolkata. He visited a temple. That temple had all the gods. Ganesha, Kali, Shiva, Kartikeya, all the gods were there. 
He had the darshan, he saw all the gods. Krishna also was there. there. He was not a devotee. And he happened to come and meet Srila Prabhupada in Kolkata. He said, I think Krishna is God. Then Srila Prabhupada asked him, Why do you think Krishna is God? He said, All other gods are having some weapons in their hands. Some Trishoda, some Vishnu, some But here is one person playing flute and standing like this, Trivandi, and enjoying. So God must be enjoying. God should not be doing anything else. Actually, God is doing everything. Okay, in one sense, God is only doing everything. At the same time, God is not doing anything else. This is Achitya, position of the Lord. God is fully free. He is enjoying. That is why, but He has nothing to do with the created material in the way That is why we should not go and disturb Krishna. Krishna, give me job, give me this, give me that. He is enjoying. For that you should go to Vishnu. You can go to Narasimha, you can go to Vishnu, you can go to other forms of the life points of the all the same only. But their bhava is different. It is just like you could go to the home of High Court Judge. And tell that, you know, I have some points to tell you before you write the judgment. Call him with them, come to court, not at my home. Here, if you are coming to talk to me as a friend, as a family man, you can come. But you don't talk office things here to home, don't you? Office thing is in office. So, if you go to Krishna Balaram in our temple, they are playing flute and uh, Balaram is carrying some hala and they are actually enjoying covered boys. If you ask Krishna, give me some job, Krishna will say, I really don't have a job, I am taking care of house. <laughs> he is in a different mood. His mood is enjoying Ananda. Here we should ask Krishna, Krishna, give me that Ananda which you have, the love which you have. Because that is what he is, his mood is. So it's a different mood. The Lord also comes in different room. Narasimha is in different room. You cannot go and tell Narasimha, I love you. Narasimha will roar at you. You should say, you should go with a mood of Dasya uh, Bhava to the Lord Narasimha. You worship him and serve him as a master, as a servant and master, Dasya Bhava. But when you go to Krishna, you have opportunity of all the bhavas. Dasya bhava to Vatsalya bhava to the Madhuriya bhava. So, that's why Krishna is a Sampurna avatar. He displays all the bhavas of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Among all the bhavas of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Venu Madhuriya, the Lord who is handmade having a flute and playing a tribhanti, the Lord, he, that bhava of the Lord is considered to be the highest bhava of the Supreme Personality of God. There are total 64 qualities of the Lord. It is explained in the various scriptures which is compiled by Rupa Goswami in a book called Bhakti Rasam in the same Nectar of devotion is available in our account. There are 64 qualities of the Lord. The so Krishna possesses all the 64 qualities. Krishna's own expansion, Krishna himself, there is no difference. We don't differentiate between Vishnu and Krishna. Then it becomes Ishwara Prada. We don't do. We are only saying he is in one mode, he is one mode. Just like when you are outside in the, in the market, you are in a different mood. At home you are in a different mood, isn't it? At home somebody teases you, somebody pours water at your face, you not my mind. It's some small fights at home. But in the market somebody splashes water at your face, what do you do? Hmm? You also do something. 
isn't it, to that person? So the mood is different. So like that. There is no difference among Vishnu or Krishna or Narasimha. Difference is in their bhava. So when we see like that, Krishna possesses all the 64 qualities and Vishnu possesses 60 qualities. The four qualities are extra in Krishna. They are called Venu Madhurya, Rupa Madhurya, then the Bhakta, all the devotees are there always along with him. There is one more. There are four extra qualities which Krishna possesses in the 64 qualities. So then, Lord Shiva possesses 54 qualities out of 64. Jivatmas, all of us, we possesses, possess 50 qualities out of 64 qualities. These are different qualities explained. Jivatma processes these many qualities. So hence qualitatively we are same. Qualitatively we all are gods. You are God, I am God, everybody is God, qualitatively. But quantitatively we are Anu, Lord is Vipu. We are minute, Lord is very big, unlimited. We are limited, he is unlimited. Example, drop of the sea water. Drop of the sea water has the same quality of the sea water. Qualitatively, drop is also same. Vast quantity of water in the ocean is also same. But quantitatively, is a drop, there is ocean. So that is the relationship Jivatma and Paramatma have. So, Lord is nothing to do with this material world. So, that is explained in the Purusha. It's all Purusha, Purusha Avataras of the Lord. Because sages have asked this question can you explain the Purusha Avatara of the Lord? So, Virat Rupa of the Lord. Virat Rupa of the Lord means you know, this entire creation itself is Lord's body. Because energy of the Lord is Lord's body. Sun's energy, sun planet. The energy of the sun is sun only, in one sense. Without the energy, sun cannot call, can be called, cannot be called as sun. It should have energy. So Lord's energy is called Virat Rupa of the form. That is the impersonal representation of the Supreme Personality of God. So this Virat Rupa is meant for the beginners of a spiritual practice. They appreciate Lord's energy. They have to reach and understand energetic the Lord. Now they are understanding only energy of the Lord. So the next one is <clears throat> Pashyanti Adha Rupam Adha Prachakshusha Sahasra Padoro Puja, puja, nana, 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 puja,
1000 kalyugas, 1000 dropara yugas, 1000 treta yuga, 1000 satya yugas will come in Brahma Swami. In that, 71 kalyugas ruled by one manu, first one is called Swamboa manu, second one is called Chakshusha manu, now present manu is called Vaivasvata manu. So, Vaivasvata manu is the seventh manu. One manu rules for 71 kalyugas, kali cycle, yuga cycles. So, the 71 into 6 manus are over. So 6 into 71, about 400, 520. That many Kalyugas are over in Brahma's day. And in this Vaivasvata Manu also, now present Kalyuga is 28th Kalyuga. So 27 is over. So out of 1000 Kalyugas which Brahma's day will have, we are somewhere between 460, 470th Kalyuga around there. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle of Brahma's day means this is the afternoon for Brahma. Around 12 o'clock, he may go for lunch at any time. So it's, a, it's afternoon for Brahma which is going on. So, in that we are saying how many avatars Krishna is there? How many avatars Krishna? Unlimited number of avatars. But still, of this particular day of the Brahma is explained in the Bhagavata. So the Bhagavata starts counting some of the prominent avatars from the Swami Bhuvan onwards. How did the Manu take birth? Manu took birth from Brahma. <coughs> First Krishna created Brahma. Then told Brahma, now you should create a Prajani. That's how all we done. So now let us see what are the avatars starting from the beginning. Not everything is listed, some of them are listed. So that is the three avatars of the Lord. So we are going to go through the list of these things and let us see how the things come. Sareva Prathamam Devaha Kaumaram Sarkamashitaha Chacharadushcharam Brahma Brahma Charyam Makhanvitam So first avatara. See in avatara again there are different kinds of avataras in the Lila avataras. One is called no, Swayam avatara, Lord himself. Like a Krishna, Rama. There is another avatar, it's called Amsha avatar. Amsha avatar means Lord's Amsha is incarnate. Lord Shiva is also Amsha avatar of Krishna. What is Amsha? Which Amsha? Amsha of Tamamuna. Brahma is also another incarnation of Vishnu. It's Amsha of Rajoguna. Another Amsha, and we all are Amshas. So, Amsha avatar, some energy of the Lord will get there. One more avatar is called Shaktya Vesha avatar. Shaktya Vesha avatar means Lord will take a Jivatma and empower the Jivatma. Now you go and establish. He is empowered by the Lord. Actually, Parashurama is empowered in Kagesha. Shaktya Vesha avatar of the Lord. Buddha is the empowered of the incarnation of the Lord. So when it comes to Kumaras, the first avatar is explained as Kumaras. They are not a Swamsha avatar of the Lord. They are actually the Shaktya Avesha avatar of the Lord. They are actually a Jivatmas. Those Jivatmas are empowered for certain purpose by the Lord. Hence they are counted under avatars. Otherwise they are not avatars. So, here it is. First of all, in the beginning of creation, there were the four unmarried sons of Brahma, the Kumaras, who being situated in the awe of celibacy, celibacy 
underwent a severe austerity for the realization of the absolute truth. So Brahma is created as the lotus and uh, he has been born and he is revealed uh, what should I do next? Then he found lotus stem below his seat. Then he dived inside the stem and went inside. Nothing he could find came back. Then he heard a sound. Two words, ta and ka, tapa. Then he understood, I should do tapas. Then he meditated on the Lord. Pleased by the meditation of the Brahma, the Lord Vishnu appeared, told, I have created you with the purpose of creating progeny and creation. He said, yes, my dear Lord, I will create. Okay, now you go on creating. Create first all Prajapatis. There are so many Jeevatmas are waiting to take the body and enjoy in the material world. You should give opportunity for them by creating bodies for them. The creating bodies is the work of Prajapatis. Now you do. First Brahma by his energy given by Vishnu, he created four Kumaras. First of all, in the beginning of creation, there are the four unmarried sons of Brahma. Sanat Kumara, Sanatana Kumara, Sanaka Kumara, Sanandana Kumara. These are the four Kumaras. Sanat, Sanandana, Sanaka, Sanatana. He created four Kumaras. And as they were born, they were kind of realized the sages. Now Brahma said, I created all of you. Now your work is that you should create a more population. Because there are so many people, Jivatmas are waiting to get body. Now you should get married and you should uh, create the progeny. But these four sons of Brahma said, my dear father, we are sorry. We are not interested. We wanted to remain celibate and pursue self-realization. Brahma is a epitome of Rajoguna. Rajoguna's anger and all very quickly comes. Brahma became very angry. First to disobey sons in the creation. <laughs> <laughs> Not following your father's order. We are very angry. Out of his anger, you know, the center of his eyebrow, a living being came. It is called Rudra. When it's Raudra, the Rudra came. Rudra is a, he came out of anger. So his quality is destruction. Then he told, Brahma said, now you create. Rudra started spoiling what is created. He said, shop, shop, you don't create. Now, now I will drive again and get some more people. Then Brahma created Sages. Vasistha, Guru, Kardama, all the Sages he created. And told Sages, now you are Prajapatis, Daksha, Guru, all of your Prajapatis. Now you create the Prajin. But they are very slow not meeting the target timelines. Brahma was not happy in what to do. That time, from the right side of the Brahma's shoulder, another son was born. His name is called Manu. Left side of the Brahma, a woman was born. Her name is called Shatarupa. And this son was, as per the desire of I am ready to create any number of living entities. Whatever you say, I am ready to do. Brahma was very pleased with the Shatarupa and Manu. From there, the Manava has come. So the Manu starts creating rampantly all the living beings in the planet. This is the, the story of creation. So these four Kumaras, the first to disobey sons of Brahma, who created anger in Brahma's head in the beginning itself. So they are great ascetics. 
even though they are growing old, but they were not appearing to be more, not more than six years old boys. Six years old boys, not wearing any dress, naked. This is the appearance of these four advanced sages called four Kumaras. They were extremely attractive, very knowledgeable. They were searching for the absolute truth, doing great, great austerities. They went roaming and roaming and roaming all around. They went to the doors of Vaipantha. And they wanted to go inside. Then the doorkeepers of Vaipantha stopped. Who are these disturbed and silly beings? coming naked and going to his disturb Vishnu, who is inside. So now the story will come in the later chapters of Srimad Bhagavata. We will discuss at that time. So these are the four sages. So this is the first list of Lila Avataras. This is one of the Avataras, Lila of the Lord. So these four Kumaras, Kars, Jayan and Jaya, that's all later here in Yaksha, here in Yashiku. In next life, no, Ravana and Kumakarna, Shishupala and Nandavakra. These are the three lives they have taken to as the demons that went back to their position as giant projects. So, the first incarnation. So, next. Vitiyam to Bhavayasya Prasatalagatam Mahim Uttarishyan Upadatta Yajnesha Saukaram Babu Yes, what is the next information? The supreme enjoyer of all sacrifices except the incarnation of the Bhur Varaha, the second incarnation and for the welfare of the earth he lifted the earth from the legal regions of the universe. So, as Brahma said now, Manu, Shatarupa, you are married, you are, your duty is to create, now progeny, go create. And Manu looked around, yes, now and go, is not able to find the earth. But there's one in the ocean. And Manu said, where I will go? The planet is not visible. Then what to do? Brahma was thinking what to do. Then from the ears of Brahma, a boar came, Vara started expanding and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's called Shweta Varaha. There are two kinds of Varaha avatar. Shweta Varaha, Rakta Varaha, Arjila Varaha. Shweta Varaha came for this purpose. Rakta Varaha came for killing Hiranyaksha. There are two different Varahas. So this Varaha came out of the Brahma's ears, started growing bigger, bigger the tusk. And then he got into the ocean. Huge the ocean, Gandhodaka ocean. He has explained the previous verse, no? the water is filled. So he got into water. He was so gigantic that his skin pores absorbed all the water. The ocean became dry. Then in the tusk, he took the earth up and lifted it up, placed it in its orbit. So this avatar of the Varaha, so where the bhumi, with the touch of tusk of the Varaha, became bhumi devi. She is also is one of the concert of the Lord. That is why in the worship of Venkatramana, Srinivasa, Bhu Devi, Sri Devi. So Bhu Devi is also considered as a concert of Vishnu. So Varaha is lifted up and kept there. So that is why, so Bhor. So Bhor is different from the pig. Pig what we see in the cities and gutters, very dirty animals. Actually Bhor, I don't think you would have seen Bhor. Boar in the forest, they are called wild boars. They are not as dirty as this uh, pigs in the gutter. 
There is a big dust, they are very heavy, they are very gigantic living beings. The bore can be, can make up to 150 kg, 200 kg, 500 kg. It's like so very heavy, bores are very strong. And uh, so, the poor incarnation, the Lord took and did a transcendental. Then after bringing the earth up, little water, he shook his body. So, some uh, the hair of the body fell on the earth. That is called Dharva grass. So the Lord is transcendental. He is not a poor or big what he is in this world. He is taken like that rupa and he is glorified that particular rupa of the Lord, of, of the creation. So this is the second incarnation. In this particular day of the Brahma. Then. Tritiyam Shri Sargam Vai. Deva Shippam Bukhetya Sahai Tantram Sapratam Ajashta Naishkaryam Karmanam Yata In the millennium of Rishis, the personality of God acts at the third empowered incarnation in the form of Devashi Narada, who is a great sage among the Deva demigods, he collected expositions of the Vedas which deal with the devotional service and which inspire non fruiting action. The Lord next incarnation is Devashi Narada. So Devashi Narada came. So what did Devashi Narada did? So Devashi Narada that is the story will come in the upcoming chapters. He was born as a son of a main servant. By serving the great sages, they called Bhakti Vedanta. His mother was a main servant, serving in an ashram of a rishi. And the sages came there, traveling sages came there to the ashram to reside there for four months building chapter Mahasya. So this small boy along with the mother served all these sages including their personal service like washing their dress, wash, serving them food, cleaning the place where the food is served, all that. Made work he was doing. But from the childhood this boy was not like other boys. He was extraordinary. He was not interested in mischievous activities like notorious children simply do. He was very grave. He was not interested in some play and toy and games. He was very grave. This boy was very serious about life. And he asked those sages, after they had their food, there are some remnants in your plates, your leaves. Can I have that Mahavasa? You took their permission by seeing this boy is a seriousness, he's not like other playful boys. Say just that alright, think. So he got a very special Mahaprasada of the sages. Bhakti Vedanta's great devotees. Then the rest of the time in Chaturmasya, these Bhakti Vedantas used to sit and discuss Bhagavata. And this boy used to sit and hear in their discuss. So as it is said, Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasetanam. What is happening? Shavanam, Yatanam. This boy heard and heard. And before sages leave, he begged for their mercy and said, Please bless me. And sages bless him and sages left. But here, here in, his, in his life, he had only mother, and mother only had him. So he cannot go away anywhere. He was born by the affection of his mother. He was always thinking, I should progress, I should get Krishna, I should progress in Krishna consciousness. One day, when a mother had, was going in the evening for milking a cow in a neighborhood, a 
mother was bitten by a snake and passed away. When this boy saw mother passed away, he considered that as will of the providence. Oh, Krishna wanted to take away mother from me. There is a higher purpose. So immediately he considered this is a mercy of the Lord and he left for the Lord. And he walked, walked, walked to the north. He said, northern direction people go for self-realization. So he went and walked north. There are hills and forests and streams and valleys. He crossed and crossed. Somewhere he was very tired. And he approached the river where he drank some sweet water from the river. And on the bank of the river, there was a tree. He sat under a tree, closed his eyes. And thinking of what all Bhakti Vedanta used to describe, he thought about it. As he meditated on the pastimes of the Lord, he immediately saw very beautiful, inexplainable, wonderful, attractive form of the Supreme Personality of God and Paramatma in his heart. As he sees, he wants to see more and see more. He was not satisfied. He was experiencing the joy of having the darshan of the Lord. Just like in a material sense gratification, something which you like, you want to have more and more and more. So Lord is transcendental happiness as you experience. Suddenly, Lord is Shatasachin, what is looking? I'm not able to see what I'm missing. Was missing. When the Asharira Vani, we heard, we heard the sound of the Lord. The Lord said, I have now shown you the glimpse of my existence, my darshan of you. You are not fully pure enough. The rest of the life, you chant the holy names of Lord. You do the austerities. End of this life, you will achieve the perfection. Till then, bye bye. So, Lord left. So, then he started chanting the glories of the Lord. Started walking all over in the rest of the life. Like a brother that was supposed to sing and glory of walking everywhere. And end of the day of the Brahma, he is dissolved, Pradayapan, and the and the, the boy died and passed away and, and the new life has begun again, the new creation. He was awarded with the body of Devarshi, Narada, with the Veena in the hand and where he can completely liberated soul, where he is not bound by any conditions of this existence. He can go everywhere and always keep singing the glories of the Lord. And uh, he combined the literature for the benefit of all of us, called Narada Panchara. And the Narada Panchara. So that's a devotion which inspired the non fruitive actions. So he collected what is most important from the Vedas. Because Vedas are very vast, there's a chance that we may get lost in the Vedas. Where he said in Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita second chapter, Yamima Pushpita Vacham Pravadanti. So Kavar Krishna says, the Vedas deal with the three modes of material nature. It, gives, it talks about the flowery language. Krishna wants Arjuna, don't get carried away by the flowery language of the Vedas. Because Vedas will tell how to become powerful, learn on Veda. You do this, do that, do this, you get this. It's called flowery language. It attracts you to be in the material world. Krishna is telling Arjuna, don't get carried away with the flowery like the Vedas. So, Narada took out what is the most important aspect from the Veda. Narada comes He gave the scripture of the devotional service to the mankind. And he drove it all across and created varieties of pastimes of the Lord. Whoever he touched, they became devotees of the Lord. He went and uh, uh, spoke to Kayalu when she was pregnant. And Prahlada was born. 
and he went and spoke to Dhruva, who went for his father's kingdom, bigger than father's kingdom. He began to worship the Lord. He went and first spoke to Daksha's children. Daksha was actually appointed to create progeny. Daksha created ten thousand children, and all the ten thousand children, Daksha said, "Now you are become sober. Go to the river Saraswati bank." Do some tapas and come back. After that, you all have to get married and create progeny. That is my goal. Ten thousand children he has created. Another one he went there and spoke, brainwashed all the ten thousand people, and said that, "What are you doing in this material world? Go back to spiritual world." And all of them left. And Daksha is waiting. Ten thousand children did not come back. Then again, Daksha created one thousand children, and. Still knowing, he sent them also to the bank of Saraswati River to do the same. Now the one again went and told them, "You know what your brothers have done? You should follow the path of your brothers." All that one thousand also left and went back to God. This time, Daksha became really angry at Narada. He cursed Narada. You are the garb of a sannyasi. You are taking all my children. They are so small. They are preaching the renunciation. I curse you that you cannot stay in one place. So Narada only took that as a boon. He does not stay in one place. He keeps traveling and keeps saying Narayan and preaching. This is the story of the Narada Muni. So like this Narada Muni has another. Uh, he is a empowered incarnation, Shakti Avesha Avatar of the Lord. And he also creates interesting pastimes. He comes and passes this uh, gossip from here to there and there to there and appropriately and brings out some pastimes of the Lord. Make somebody happy, comment tell somebody, you know, God has done this, He has done this, He has done this. So this is how the uh, Narada Muni Lord in the Vedas of the Lord, and he is part of a confidential circle of Lord's. Is liberated so. So these are the incarnations which we have discussed today. In the next class, uh, we will discuss more. Next class, we are going to discuss. Uh, okay, this also I finish. Then I will die. Tuye dharma kala sarke.
Narayana is Lord Himself. And another pastime is explained in Mahabharata why Narayana came as incarnation first in place. There is one asura called Dambasura. Dambasura is the Hankara. He was a devotee of the Surya Deva. He did tapasya to control the entire universe. So much tapasya, then the Surya Deva said, yes, you tell me what you want. Just like the Hiranyakashipu said, he also said, nobody should be able to kill me. Surya so said, that I cannot do that. Because I myself don't have that facility to live forever. So you tell me what else you want. He said, let me get 1,000 Kavachas, armors. If someone has to kill me, they have to remove Kavacha by Kavacha to reach in the kill. And I want a boon. If one Kavacha of my body to be removed, that person who is fighting with me should have done 1,000 years of Tavasya. And after removing one Kavacha, he should die. So basically it requires 1,000 people to do 1,000 years of Tavasya to kill him. And they will all die after that. So he asked with such kind of wound which he thought nobody will be there to defeat him now. So then his name became Sahasra Kavacha. The Sahasra Kavacha became very strong. Just like Hiranyakashipu controlled, he started controlling all devatas and everybody was fearful of him. He became very powerful demon. So dharma, the religion, so and thought it is very much disturbing and to do something. Then they did a tapasya. So Dharma and his wife did a great tapasya. And then Vishnu came and they said, Vishnu, can you please subdue and kill this Sahasra Kaucha? He's destroying all of us. Vishnu said, all right, I will take birth. So then he is born as a son of Dharma. And but when they take a birth, they are prince. They are called Narayana. One is representing Jiva Atma, one is a Vitarana. So Narayana took birth. And they become great ascetics, great tapasya they did. As per the plan of the Lord. So one day Sahasra Kaucha came and disturbed them. And they read the war. So Narayana, what did they do to kill him? They did like this. They discussed, okay, first Nara, you fight. They already did 1000 years for us. You fight with the Sahasra Kavacha for 1000 years. When you are fighting 1000 years, I will complete my 1000 years for us. Then you kill him, remove the Kavacha, you will die. I will come with the Nurta Sanjeevini and wake you up. Then I will fight for 1,000 years. At that time, you should do 1,000 years of Tapasya. So they climbed like this. First, Nara went and fought and vigorously fought because of Tapasya Shakti, one Kavacha fell. Now 999 was there. One Kavacha fell, Nara died. Nara came running. Sahasra Kavacha surprised. Just now, he died in one more person. He was looking alike. And he came with the Mita Sanjeevini and woke him up and he started fighting. Nara got up and went for the Pasya for thousand years. Then the thousand years Narayana fought, but Kavacha fell. Of course, Narayana can never die. Apparently, now Narayana dead. Nara came, woke him up, Mita Sanjeevini he gave, and brought him to life. Nara started fighting, Narayana went for the Pasya. Like this, they exchanged 999 times. One culture was left, lost. Now, Sahasra Kavacha came to the now and there is nobody can save me. And then uh, he ran. He took the shelter of Surya. Then Narayana went to Surya Deva and said, release him. We are supposed to kill him. Surya said, you see, if anybody surrenders to me, I have to give protection. He is my devotee. So he said, the next life is Sahasra Kaucha. 
So that time, Naranarayana gave him cuts to Surya. For your adamant behavior, next life you take birth in the Bhuloka as a human being. So as a result of the cuts to the Surya, the combination of Sahasra Kavacha and Surya, Karina took birth. With a one Kavacha. And Naranarayana came as Krishna and Arjuna and killed Karna. So this is the uh, story which is mentioned in Pranas, the book Naranarayana. So Naranarayana is now also staying in the Madhrika Ashrama, in the Madhrinath and going to Pasya. So they will continue to stay you know, till the end of the Kalpa. End of the Kalpa means 1000 Kaliva is one Kalpa. One Brahma's day is called one Kalpa. So one Kalpa they will stay. This Kaliva they will stay and Satyavya will say next Kaliva they will be there. They will continue to stay. So that is the incarnation. So that is the incarnation of the Lord. Our fourth incarnation. Kandarnarayan. They came in the beginning. Now also there, there are so many Kalivas they already seen. So many dog arrivals have passed. So many Kalivas have passed. So many things have passed. This is the incarnation of Nan Narayan. So, more we will discuss in the next class. Krataka Ashwam Bhagavatam Ki, Sri Krishna Prabhupada Ki, Sri Krishna Prabhupada Ki.